The word of the day is overindulge. Have too much of something enjoyable, especially if you're gonna drink. All right, so I shall introduce our first speaker, um, Lee John. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly. And he will be speaking about himself, me. Oh, I got him. Oh, well. It's too late. It's too late. Spread it it's too all. Late. When were you sick? Hmm? I've been sick for like a week now. Oh, well, yeah, you start first. Good evening, everyone, Toastmaster, and fellow dogs. Go dogs. <laughs> um, so, my name is, uh, to start off, if you don't know me, my name is Asian Mama. E, like the letter E, and then gin, like the drink, <laughs> and then mama, as in like the mom. So, um, so I don't want to start off a relationship with a lie, but I honestly had nothing prepared. I didn't prepare till like today, but I was thinking, it's a speech about myself. How hard can it be? So let's just see how hard it will be. So, I'm going to start from the beginning, a couple years back, 20 years, in the country of Mexico, where I was born. The only interesting story about that is that, how I got my last name as Mama. So my dad and my mom, both, last name, both had the last name Ma, and for some reason, in Mexico, they combine your parents' last name. You know, this is why typically Hispanics have long last name, but in my case, it's just a short and awkward last name for a kid. <laughs> but thank God I didn't discover that until like high school. So this whole time in middle school and elementary school, I've been using Ma. But if I used Mama back then, I'm pretty sure I would have been bullied, but thank God. <laughs> so I applied for my green card. Well, not apply, I renew my green card. And that was when the lady told me, how could your passport and your green card and your document all have different last names? One of them has mama, the other has ma. And I was like, hmm. And then she yelled at me, and, but I was like, do you think I can add the extra ma on the document? And then she was like, no. But somehow it ended up having my green card having the last name mama. So yeah, that's the interesting story from 20 years ago. So now my name is Ejen Mama. Okay. So, after that, um, I'm going to tell you my fears. Actually, no, actually, let me think. Okay. My, um, I'm going to tell you about, yeah, my fears. So, cockroach. I remember the last time I came to this meeting and there was a discussion about cockroach. So, two days ago, I came home. I was like putting down my book bag, and then suddenly I saw a cockroach flipped over, and I screamed. <laughs> and I, I left my room, and I, I went back in, and then I saw two dead cockroaches. But yeah, that's the story. <laughs> <laughs> it was a scary experience. <laughs> so today is a sad day, because Stan Lee died. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna show off a bit about my genius today. So since it was a rainy day, I went to camp. I came to campus, go to class, finish class, went to Bolton. After Bolton, like I uh, go to Memorial or no, go to Millish Hall for work. So what happened was it was raining, and so as I every step I took, water got onto my feet, or and then my socks wet. And I had to stay in that building for the whole day. So eventually I went home to change my socks. And I came back to campus, and my socks got wet again for this Toastmaster speech. And, but I was smart. I bought an extra pair of socks just in case this would happen. So yeah, this is a sad day. So, and now my socks are still wet and cold, but after this, I'm gonna go change. <laughs> 
Um, next topic. Okay. So, alright. I'm not really a talkative person and a, for speeches, this is not really my forte. And I don't know why I'm really doing this. I guess it's to enhance myself, you know? They say college is a time for experience, to get out of your comfort zone. And so this is exactly what I'm trying to do. And right now, my heart is beating really fast, if you cannot tell, but it's all right, because it's cool. And so, you know, my flashcards have been out of order, so, but, so how's everyone doing? Good. Good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't really have much to go on with this speech, and my note cards aren't really helping. Cause, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, just a reminder to smile, to be calm, but, and I see that my time has been up. Thank you. That was funny. I love that. Uh, wow. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> I forgot to talk about the odd counter, the grammarian, and timer. Timer, would you tell us what your role is for this meeting? Alright, so I'm the timer for this meeting. This basically means that for every, almost every single role that's written on the agenda, I'll be timing you, and the speeches will uh, be timed as well, according to their time. Uh, green on the card means you've reached the bottom limit. Yellow means you're halfway done. And then red means to wrap it up, basically. And that's going to be true of, er, of the prepared speeches, table topics, and the evaluators. Awesome. All counter. Hey guys, my name's Serena, and I'm going to be your all counter for today. So basically what I'm doing is just checking out what fillers you're using and what fillers you like to use more than others, and I'm just going to keep track of those and tell you how many set up you need. Grammarian. Hey guys, I'm Noor. I'm the grammarian. I'm just going to be watching to make sure your grammar is on point, run on sentences, subject for agreement, and default. Nadia. Nadia. Hey guys, I'm Nadia. I'm the grammarian. I'm just going to be watching to make sure your grammar is on point, run on sentences, subject for agreement, and default. Nadia. Nadia. Are you going to do your speech? Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure? Okay. Yeah, so, I would like to introduce our specky. Second speaker, Nadia. I want to just move me to third. Oh, okay. <laughs> I would like to introduce yeah. our alternate second speaker, <laughs> um, uh, Tyler Burnett. He shall be speaking about how to be an effective salesperson in his speech, keeping in time with the world of sales. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh, Kyle Witt right here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. The world of sales, selling to people, getting people to say yes. It's difficult sometimes, but there are a few key strategies that we can use. Starting with building rapport. If I go up to somebody and I tell them, you should buy my product. That's a very confrontational method of trying to sell something. Whereas I went up to somebody and said, Hey, how are you doing today, sir? You know, big smile on my face, dress nice. You know, how about the dog? You, you watched that Auburn game, didn't you? Of course you did. You live in Athens. Right. And get a conversation going. Get him comfortable speaking to me. Getting, in knowing, knowing, getting to know me as a person. That eases them into the sale. Next. You ask questions. You get to know as much as you possibly can about that person. I go up to somebody and say, hey, you like football, right? Yeah, yeah, man, I love football. Yeah. So you're a Georgia fan? Oh, no, I'm not a Georgia fan. I'm an Auburn fan. And, you know, knowing that, it changes your strategy for selling to that person. Because I know not to say, oh, how about the dogs? Because he's an Auburn fan. But if I didn't ask questions, I wouldn't know that. 
So asking questions is extremely important. Get to know as much as you can about the person or entity you're selling to. Three, identify the needs and goals of the buyer. We all need things. We need water, we need food, we think we need football. And so finding out what that person needs the most, that's what they're willing to pay for. And if you can provide a solution, step number four, to their need, you can make a sale. So by going through these first four, it actually leads you up to the last one, which is gaining a commitment. And a commitment can look like Pandora. Try Pandora Premium for 10 days for free. That's a commitment. It brings you one step closer to the sale. Anytime you step closer and closer to the sale, of course, closer you are to the sale. And so it's important to get the little commitments. It may not be that one big commitment straight to the sale. It could just be these little incremental commitments. Just like in that Pandora Premium, where you're not paying for anything, but you get to try out the product and get used to using it. And therefore, it's one step closer. It's not all the way, but it is one step closer. Now, for role playing purposes, I've asked Tyler Chan, our president, to come up and role play with me about using these five steps to close the sale. Please uh, <laughs> introduce Tyler Chan to the stage. <laughs> okay. How you doing, sir? What's your name? My name's Tyler Burnett. Oh, I'm Tyler Chan. Oh, Tyler? Tyler? That's awesome. That's great. So, I overheard a conversation that you like Atlanta and the United football. I do. Can you tell me a little bit about it? I'm actually not a football fan, but I'd love to hear more about it. So, it's the MLS team that is given to the Atlanta and Georgia State. So, this is our big representation for soccer in the Southeast, and it's growing. This is one of the biggest uh, audiences that we have in the Southeast, and now there's just records broken for attendance for the entire season. It's, it's insane. And our team is projected to win the MLS Cup. So. so oh really? Yeah. So how, how do I get to to go into a game? And when are they? They right now we're in playoffs, so it depends on when we win games and what stage we're at. Right now we're going to go to the Eastern Conference Final, actually. So we're going to have to wait to see when that game is taking place. But once that is up there, then you can see what the tickets are available, and then you can pick where you want to sit. But they're gonna be really expensive though, so. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, well, being a college kid, I don't know if I can afford those yet. Uh, so, so you, you're a pretty active person, right? You like to play soccer. I mean, you obviously like to watch it. You like to play it too? Yeah. So you, so you say you find yourself a pretty active person. Uh, do, you, do you ever ride a bike or, or do anything like to class, perhaps? Not to class, I just walk to class. You walk to class? Yes. Just walk to class, okay. And I also overheard, you know, I'm so sorry, I wasn't trying to be rude or anything. But I also overheard you're also Toastmasters president of the Toastmasters Club. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, I see you already have a watch, uh, but I was wondering if I could show you this Timex fancy classic watch. It's pretty good. See, now, now I know because I used to be in a Toastmasters Club, I was the vice president of last year's club, and I know time is important. It's important to you. It's important to keep track of it. So, my ask of you is, that wouldn't you love to have uh, just a classic business professional, just wear anywhere, any time of the day, watch? Wouldn't that be something that you would possibly want? What would be the difference between that watch and this watch? Though? Well, this one, in, in a business class, my, my father, he's been an executive for quite a few years. And he has referred to me that wearing the classic style watches like this one comes across more professional than the sports style watches. Not that the sports style watches are bad, but that they're just, in, in a professional setting, 
more desirable, per se. Yeah. And so, I mean, you obviously you can appreciate the advantage of having a watch. And so, I want you to try this watch for 10 days, and let me see what you think, versus the other one. No risk, nothing. But, if you do decide you want to buy it, I can give you a $10 off discount. So that would be $30 for a $40 watch. Just for trying. What do you say? Just to try. That's like a pretty good deal for me. $40 for a watch? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a little too good to be true. It is, it is what it is. It's not too good to be true. The way it's made, it's made by Timex, and they actually want affordable watches for regular people. So, what do you say? 10 days? Ten days? <laughs> Timex. So what? Timex is a nice watch. Where is this company from? Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't prepare that far into this speech. Tell you. But I can tell you, it's a wonderful watch. And I've been trying this watch for almost six months now. Never off beat. Always keeps date. And I am just asking you to try it so my family can feed. <laughs> and you said I can try for 10 days and then give it back to you for free? Yeah, if you don't like it. I do. <laughs> yeah. Where Thank will you. you be in 10 days? <laughs> okay, so that was, that was that is the role play section and I'm going to ask Tyler Chan to stay on the stage for the audience participation. This is actually now where I ask you guys what you thought of the sale. Anybody? Anybody? What do you think? I thought you could have made a slightly smoother transition between sports into business watches. Okay. Anybody else? Or just what you thought of the whole role play situation. Whatever, whatever comes to mind. Anybody? Personally, if someone started asking me, like, if I ride my bike to class or whatever, I'd be like, wow, you're creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Anybody else? Tyler, what do you think? Personally, I wouldn't buy that watch. <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough. See, that's the important thing about sales is that you don't always win. More, more than often not, you're going to lose a sale before you get one. But it's getting that one that sets you above the profit margin. Anything else? you got to help me out here. i got to get you talking for at least another like 30 seconds, I'm sure. Minute. Okay. I mean, I can ramble on here about you know how you guys aren't talking, and I can do that for a minute and entertain you. Okay, I have a question. Um, what? Instead of saying like, instead of being like, oh, I didn't prepare that much into my speech. How come you didn't just make up like, oh yeah, it's from um, Taiwan? Like. Good question. Because in sales, you're always genuine to the customer. Doesn't matter what it is. If you sell something to somebody out of a lie, and most people are not stupid. I mean, you know, there, there's a lot of stupid people out there. <laughs> Most people are not stupid, and then when they figure out that you, they've been lied to, they're not going to come back to you. So you don't get a return sale. So you're not only want to trying to make the sale, you're also trying to make return sales to the customer and the customer's friends, and the customer's family, and everybody that the customer comes in contact with. So it's of the utmost important to always be genuine. Any other questions? Questions about sales in general. I lived with a guy who's an exec for all his life, pretty much. So I have a lot of knowledge about sales. Anything? So what not you... not the actual like business business side of it, but like the <laughs> ethics. Sorry, go ahead. That was, that was... So when you switched topics and started like offering the watch, he was immediately cautious, and you might seem pushy to some people trying to push the watch. How can you approach that in a situation? Approaching a push, uh, a lot of people are just in general, just because a lot of people they get sold to and they get sold, just like she said, you know, not genuine. And I think showing that the person that you're genuinely, see, this was a role play situation, so it's it's a little bit hard for me to like get across my genuine, you know, genuine genuinosity. Genuine. Gen no, genuine. 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 genuineness. Yeah. It, it's hard to get get across my genuineness because it is. It's still role play, but being genuine because I think people really can see when someone is being genuine. They they do have while their own interest, the person other person's interest as well. That wraps up the questions, and that is the end of my speech. Thank you so much, guys.
So make sure you fill out this slip on your feedback for each speaker on the sheet here. Um, I'd like to introduce our last speaker, Nadia. She is speaking about something. Can you trust yourself? <laughs> that was good. <laughs> My question to y'all is, do you like Chick-fil-A? Yeah. Yes. You do? Yeah. You like Chick-fil-A? Do you like their waffle fries? Yeah. You like their milkshakes? Uh, yeah, okay. What about their homophobia? What about the corporation itself? Do you like Chick-fil-A? Do you think it's good? The point that I'm trying to express here is that a generalized question can have many answers. You can look at it through many points of view, many perspectives. You can't just take something at its core value, what you think it is. Other people look at it differently. And if you expand this to a greater scale, say our political climate, you realize that in our current time, politics is very polarizing. Democrats and Republicans, they don't get together. Liberals and conservatives, they're always, there's the spread of false truth is rampant. It's ongoing. So in this world, you have to take the time and the effort to inform yourself. Before someone tells you something and you shape your own opinions and beliefs upon what they've said because you trust them, because they're your friend, because you heard it on the news, it's important that you yourself go look up that information. Don't check one source, not two, maybe even three. Make sure it's reputable. This is your own life. You are, you are responsible for yourself. You are responsible for making sure everything you say, that your own beliefs are true, that they are based on fact. If you don't know yourself what's going on in an election, how do you know who to vote for? If you don't know what's going on with the orcas, how can you make a statement on SeaWorld? You can't. You are shaping, people are shaping their own opinions on anything they hear. The way that information is dispersed throughout our current status quo is the media gets information from someone, someone listens to the media, they then go regurgitate that information on social media to other people, and other people hear it. That's how your information. You either hear it from people, from social media, from the, or from the media itself. And as it goes down these three tiers, you recognize that Little bits of information are lost along the way. More things are generalized along the way. You can't take everyone at their exact words. People don't use precise language. I'll ask you again, do you like Chick-fil-A? Is Chick-fil-A good? You can't answer that. I'm not being precise. I'm not being specific. How do you know what your answer should be? How, how do you know that you've done enough? And while checking three sources, two, seems like a lot. It seems like a lot of effort for anyone, for most people. You have to remember that this is for yourself. It's just goddamn respectful. It's respectable to know your own information, to know the things you're saying are right, to be able to trust yourself, to be able to trust your own opinions. A hallmark of U.S. like civilization is just your independence. It is independence that brought this country to where it is. And if you can't take the, the effort and the time to research things yourself, how can you trust yourself? You can't. You can't trust yourself. Just the other day, I was in the science library studying for chem. Studying for chem. And <laughs> one of my friends was talking about Stacey Abrams and Ryan Kemp. He was saying, you know, Stacey Abrams is trying to take away hope from us. The hope scholarship, she's trying to take it away. And for me, as a college student, that just doesn't seem right. I don't think I want to vote for her. I'm, I'm liberal, but I don't want to vote for her. And I thought to myself, wow, okay, whenever anyone talks about politics, I get pretty heated. I'm just going to stay out of this one. But then he kept going. <laughs> 
he kept going, and he was like, she's terrible. She's literally trying to defund hope. She's trying to make it so it's not about academics. It's about needs. It's about, it's going to be a needs-based program instead. And in my mind, I was like, wow, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Should I tell him myself? Should I take that burden upon myself to inform him? Should I get into a discussion that could become uncivil? Should I possibly ruin friendships over this? No. I shouldn't. It's not my job to inform you. It's your job to inform yourself. To make sure you know what you're talking about. Stacey Abrams is not trying to take away hope from any college students. She's trying to add a third tier to hope. There is Zell, there is hope, and she wants to add a need-based portion. And this person was going to vote against her because he didn't know. Within two minutes, I could not hold my tongue any longer, I'll be honest. I couldn't do it. And I told him, I was like, listen, everything you're saying is wrong. And I know myself that that's wrong. You, I shouldn't come up to someone and say that outright. But there comes a time and a place where it gets too much. You shouldn't accept notions out of convenience. You shouldn't accept what people tell you just because it fits your own purview. When you hear something and it makes sense to you because it already goes with your current beliefs, you just continue believing it. You keep going being like, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. You hear information that tells you you're wrong, that directs